nylon 66, which is not unfortunately a free radical polymerization. It's um, it's actually a, a nucleophilic <coughs> substitution at a carbonyl. So we've got an acid chloride on both ends. There's six carbons, which is why it's called nylon 66. Six carbons for the amine. And what happens is it's a, what's called a step growth polymerization. Is that they all kind of react all at the same time rather than a chain reaction, and they make these long chains as soon as they um, touch each other. So we've got um, in this kind of yellowy colored aqueous solution, this is the amine in, the so in, about point, in about half molar sodium hydroxide, so it's an aqueous solution with a little bit of base. We're going to be generating HCl from one of these hydrogens and that chlorine, one of these hydrogens and this chlorine. So we've got base in here to soak that up and to make the reaction go a little faster. And then in this, we've got the acid chloride, which is very reactive with water, but it reacts with this faster. This is sitting in hexanes. So what I'm going to do is pour the aqueous solution in first. And it's all pre-measured, but we usually use 10 mils of that. And then you'll see a little bit of HCl coming off the top when this happens, but not too much. And then See it, yeah, as long as you don't have to breathe it. You can see a little bit of it's on the edges, but anyway, so here's the uh, acid chloride. It's called adipyl chloride in hexane. So what I'm going to do is pour it in here pretty carefully so that it kind of runs down the side of the flask. And at the interface is where the reaction is going to happen. We're not going to mix it up. We're going to let it be pretty still. And just at the, inter I don't know if you can see the little bit of uh, HCl coming off of that, but just at the interface, is where the nylon's being formed. So what I'm going to do is grab down here and... Wow. If I was a really good machine, I could make a nice, even thread. The science of matter. Yeah, but I mean, what's amazing is that, you know, little tiny molecules, which you can't... Oops, I dropped it. You can't see. You sound really not a good machine. But, I mean, if I was a good machine, I'd make a nice, even thread, and you could knit a nylon scarf for a mouse out of this or something. But, you know, what tiny little molecules, which you can't possibly see, turn into this giant macroscopic thread of nylon. I keep breaking it. It's really cool. Um, what I'll do is, you can't touch it right now because it's covered with um, sodium hydroxide. But what I'll do is, when this is done, and it, it's not done yet, but I'm going to take it and wash it, and I'll bring it back in, and then once I wash it off, you can actually handle the stuff. So, it's, it's quite amazing, and it happens so fast. So this is how they make nylon. Of course, they don't do it with tweezers and <laughs> someone with, like me who's not a very good... I actually made a really beautiful thread of it when I was practicing, but I don't know if it's because, because I'm being watched or because the reagents are weak old now, but it's not as perfect, but it's still pretty darn impressive. I saw it. <laughs> and my grad student videoed it, so I have a, a video <coughs> of me making a really, really nice thread. <laughs> this is pretty good, though. So what happens is it just keeps reacting until you use up both of the reagents. You know, I, I'm sure one can do it, but 
stuff, the dyes that I've tried putting in there just wash out. You can dye the two different layers different colors so that it's easier to see the layers. But um, the dye that I tried to put in there didn't stick into the nylon. I'm sure there's some that will, but I haven't, haven't found that yet. It just kind of ended there. I'm not sure if it's finished or not. But. Anyhow, what I'll do is I'll wash this off and bring it back and you guys can handle it once it doesn't have sodium hydroxide on it. So, it's pretty much done. There's a little real booger there. <laughs>